Fripping hell. Something has taken out all those big, hairy, scary, funnel-web dwelling spiders that live in the reserve here. My God, it looks like World War III has gone on. We'll take a look at this later in the video. Good morning, brush turkey. I come here every morning to take a look how the male brush turkey's going, looking after his mound. And there's something I found in that spider infestation area that starts to join dots together. I like to join dots together. And I spoke about this area here. It's like a, a kite shape of spider infestation. Uh, there seems to be a great debate whether they're uh, trapdoors or funnel webs or a bit of both. Uh, the problem is I don't want to poke my finger down a hole to find out which one's the nasty one and which one's the nice one. And it's when I take a look down here. Yes, uh, it's interesting. Just walking past all the spidey holes and if I turn around here at the base of the tree, there's this here. And I think, I'm not positive, it could be a baby brush turkey. It looks like it's been dead for a little while. Uh, we're right next to a brush turkey nest. so. That's potentially what that is there. I'll need a birdie expert to properly ID this bird. Uh, maybe if I see the claws, I can tell you something. Oh, there's a close up of the claws. Yeah, so what little chick is that one? It seems to be missing its head, which might be a clue to the fate of that little chick there. Well, considering there's so many flies and whatnot coming to this little dead chick here, and there's so many spider holes around here, I can see how one dead thing is going to feed heaps and heaps of live things that are living underground here. Apart from the little chick laying there attracting flies to the area, there's also something here which attracts a lot of flies to the ground. I noticed that the other week when I was here making a video. I have not got my head around what attracts so many flies to the ground here. There's a lot of skinks and stuff as well. It is quite a dynamic area. And of course there's all those wondrous looking spiders underneath and so many of them. I'm still thinking in this style of tree here, I'm calling it a paper bark, has something to do with what's going on here. I pointed this out in the other video and it's like nobody seemed to see that part or make comment on it. Maybe it's stumped a few people, but I'm thinking they're connected to what's going on here. And I do make it a thing now, I come and look here and I just see what's going on. Let me track back to where Mr. Brush Turkey is very busy, going past what is possibly the little chick that's passed away. I think the mortality rate of brush turkey chicks is actually very high. I'm walking all over the, the spider city and I'm coming down to the mound and it's very hard to gauge the size of a mound through a video. All I'll say is it's it's large. It's a massive amount of earthwork to pull off. The male turkeys there are just gonna not speak as loud. I mean the male turkey's got to know me and it tends not to go away and it's been very busy uh, doing what it does. And I was actually here a bit earlier and I took some video. Maybe we'll roll to that after having a verbal here, but it's always, I just find it relaxing to come down here, take a look at the turkey, and then I take a look at the spider holes now. It's given this part of town such a fantastic edge. By well, putting the camera on white here, and I'll put up a title to put Imperial here. From that edge there uh, to this other edge up here, it's about 12 meters. But it's not as wide if from this side to the other side it's maybe about eight meters so it's it's longer than it is wide if that makes any sense i'm gonna call that male brush turkey ken and if you've watched the barbie movie maybe you'll understand why ken is so busy it's kicking up leaves my biggest fear in this environment and considering there's a turkey nest here is eastern brown snakes and if there was an eastern brown snake here, I tell you what, I'm not going to see it amongst this leaf litter. I just hope it's going to be more fearful of me, and I like to tread nice and big when I'm in here. But I want to make a point about what's remarkable about the spider holes up one end of this reserve. I'm going to take you to the other side of the turkey mound, and I'm going to show you that there's no spider holes there. Okay, I'm up at the pointy end of the reserve, which is triangular shaped. If I get in here, you'll see the brush turkey nest. I'm on the flip side of it now. 
the other massive spider infestation and hundreds of holes is right up the other end about 60 70 meters up that way and i'm walking uphill here and it's important to walk uphill because walking uphill will reveal the spider holes because they face downhill and i can show you here that there's not one spider hole to be seen and there's actually something which isn't here which is up the other end which is what i'm saying is a connecting feature okay you're looking for spider holes i'm not cheating here i'm not covering things up we're at the top of the ridge area here i can't find one i was up here the other day and i just thought well, that's weird i can't find any spider holes like i can find up the other end of this reserve yes there's fallen trees and debris and it's pretty messy here but there's no spider holes to be seen and what I don't see up this end of the reserve that I noticed up the other end of this reserve is those paper bark trees. There's none of those trees at all down this end. This is the next day the brush turkey man is down there and unfortunately I found in the reserve here that poor passed away little chick. Now initially I thought brush turkey. I showed a few friends photographs of what's on the ground there i had mixed reports back few people said brush turkey and i heard all sorts of other birds as well but the fact it's missing its head makes it a bit more tricky to identify if the head was there i could clearly identify it but maybe it's best to leave it to the audience that is the expert audience to resolve exactly who that little bird down there is i'm still saying brush turkey but i'm sure you'll say something totally different and it's a reminder just how dangerous a life it is in the reserve here. There's all sorts of things that you're up against, especially when you're young. I think I just saw a brush turkey chick, a little black thing scampered through. Yes, I just saw it. It's, there it goes there. Okay, you see that? Here's the brush turkey mound. The male turkey's dug in there. Hopefully gonna bring a chick out or attending to an egg. They're deep in the mound here. And I'm gonna try and see if I can see another chick here or the same chick. Uh, they move lightning fast. They're like little puffballs of black feathers. And uh, maybe if I move around, I'll see one dart in front of me. But then again, it's a bit like trying to find a needle in a frippin' haystack. I'm just following one now. There it goes up there. You see that? Brush turkey chick. Very elusive little critters. There he or she is. They blend in so well with the environment and it's almost like it keeps still and you start to see them i could go mental trying to see another little brush turkey chick here elusive little critters uh, the only chance i've seen them is when they scamper if they're sitting or standing still they just go invisible i'm just coming back up to the mound on a different angle here well, i can't see anything scampering for its life away from me at least I saw one that's well and truly alive and I'm back up at the mound and it's really muggy humid weather and boy oh boy that mound is steaming. I just flipped to the other side and I've called the turkey Ken because this is very much Ken's world. The male turkey does all the incubation work regulating the temperature tirelessly daily, weekly, monthly to get the chicks um, to the hatching phase and I've always wanted to get that footage of a chick basically scrambling out from where Ken's digging maybe one day uh, but I have to be very lucky I feel the part I don't understand is how does Ken remember where all the eggs are in this giant mound it's just a giant pile of rotting away decaying leaf litter and somehow he knows where all the eggs are it's a mystery of nature okay there's a brush turkey chick oh my god they're quick listening to me and if it gets if it gets alerted it's gonna bolt come here sweetie come on 
come on. But you can just see how well it camouflages amongst all the, the stuff on the ground here that's basically invisible. Come on, sweetie. Come on. Oh, they're elusive. I tell you, they just bolt. <laughs> Gone. The chick is somewhere in here. And in fact, I can see it. Oh, I think I can see it. I just zoom on the spot. It's right in the middle of frame. My God, they're hard to see. They just disappear if they keep still. I'm creeping up really slowly now. Like really slightly. Okay, oh God. Oh my God. The frippin' thing can fly. It's up there, middle of the screen, very small. It's in someone's front yard now. I've got a lot of video of bush turkeys, or some people call them scrub turkeys, or brush turkeys. They are very common in the suburb of Sydney where I live, which is Barara, which is surrounded by a national park. And maybe about 10 years ago, they eradicated the foxes, and it's really seen the turkey numbers go through the roof. In fact, they're almost in plague proportions, but they are a protected bird. The turkeys seem very comfortable in suburbia. They've adjusted very well. I see females roosting in the trees in our backyard, and it's a lovely sight to see. They're a very large bird. You can't miss them. But we've also had chicks from mounds which are nearby our house and they come into our backyard and they can cause havoc in the garden. They will basically rip your garden to shreds. And I remember one time we captured a chick and we had to relocate it. Remember, they're protected birds. We see female brush turkeys in our backyard all the time at different stages of maturity. They come in, they feed on some food we put out for other birds. They also come up and eat the cat food and there's a very strange relationship between our cats and the visiting brush turkeys. The cats certainly respect the brush turkeys because that brush turkey has got some pretty fierce claws and from what I read they've got a very very heavy duty peck and the male brush turkey when it's on the incubation mound looking after the eggs has got some great weapons there to defend that mound from predators who are going to try and come up and get into those eggs. Brush turkeys are very clumsy flyers. You'll see them flutter and fly to get over fences, to get up into trees to roost. I have seen them up in very high gum trees. They will go tree to tree if the trees are close together, but I've never seen one be able to fly from a high gum tree to another one that's a distance away. I don't think they can do that. I think they've got to go to ground and then flutter and do their weird flying to get up into the tree again. I'm not going to proclaim to be a brush turkey, scrub turkey, whatever turkey expert, but in reading the Wikipedia page about these birds, it's very interesting what they say about the male's nest, the incubation mound that he makes, and how he defends the mound from other males, because it's one dominant male that commands that nest. Now, what's very interesting is they talk about a mound size that's only 4 metres, or that's 13 feet across. The one I showed you in this video was like three times that size. And they talk about a height, because I never told you about the height of about 1.5 metres, or that's 4.9 feet. Yes, that's about correct. So it's the sort of thing when you're standing next to it, you can just see across the top and see what's going on. And the fact that there's these different areas there, which I believe are from different females laying eggs in there. And it says in the Wikipedia page, some of these mounds may have 50 eggs laid up inside the mound. And as I've witnessed myself with Ken the brush turkey, the amount of effort and labor he goes through to look after the mound, keep the temperature regulated, to keep adding more material to the top or scraping material away, is completely and utterly remarkable to see. It's just a miracle of nature. And the girls are just wandering in the suburb looking pretty while the male's doing all the hard work. And what is remarkable reading, and I never knew this, is the male can regulate the temperature and that actually determines the sex of the chick. Apparently reptiles do the same thing. It's a process known as temperature dependent sex determination. That's a deep subject, way too deep for me to play with. And in reading that, it puts a whole new perspective on Ken the brush turkey's earth moving abilities. From what I've seen with interactions with traffic and brush turkeys, they seem to be fairly clever at avoiding cars. Uh, remember, most people will see the birds and they break because they're a protected bird. But considering how many of them are around, and remember, most of the time you see them on the road is in the breeding season because the females are coming up from the bush and they want to visit Ken on the mound to play games. I don't see too many brush turkeys end up as roadkill. They seem to be pretty good at avoiding the traffic. 
Okay, that's a female brush turkey, and this is the phase that I'll say it's becoming more like an adult. It's uh, it's been through its chick phase, and it's doing all the things the females do. This is the morning, and they walk around scratching the earth. I'm actually very close to this chick, so it's not that scared of me. Maybe it's got used to people, and the very typical activity that uh, the brush turkeys do. When they're girls there she's there there's actually a little chick here as well i just saw a chick scamper and you only see the chicks when they move i'm not sure whether i'll see the chick again the chick is actually it's over there it's so hard to see they're so well camouflaged the chick just flew across here it's actually penned in by the fence so maybe i'm going to get as close as i possibly can very elusive these brush turkey chicks I'm walking up really, really slowly now. And the chick will probably do a, a fly to get away from me or maybe go under the fence. They're sort of cute, aren't they? Well, anything young's cute. And you see those distinctive feathers they've got along the side starting up there. She'll get to the end of the fence here and she'll probably take off like all fury. There she goes. And they scamper and you'll never... You never find them once I get into the the scrub here. This is the other female I looked at, and that's very typical of what they do. They go around scratching through compost and things, uh, looking for little bugs to eat. She's very tame, this one. She must have got used to people. I'm right up next to her. She's not very big. It's I mean it's hard to scale her on this video here. She'll grow maybe three times bigger than that once she's fully grown she's beautiful what she's finding there is worms you can just see a worm squirming and she's pulling out worms from there so while there's food there she's probably more interested in food than getting away from me I'm only a, a meter away from her I'm surprised I, I can get this close but they say she's more hungry than fearful. Yeah, she's picking out lots of worms there. She's a smart girl, isn't she? Good night, sister, to any worm in that compost. There's one there. Boom. Good night, frippin' sister. That must sting, getting picked up by a brush turkey. Ken, the amazing male brush turkey who has his incubation mound set up in reserve in suburbia and I can show you a map of the area again it's a triangular piece of bushland I don't think this area has a name but I'll put a red circle where Ken has his nest I'll also put a circle where I found all those spider holes that look like funnel web holes but people will argue no they're trapdoor holes and I took a lot of footage down a lot of holes and every hole I looked down had a spider living down inside there in Australia, you are taught if something's big, hairy, black and scary, it's a funnel web spider. You're not ever taught to think, oh, don't worry, that's just another spider that's basically harmless. And what's amazing is I never showed one of these spiders out of its hole. We only ever see the spider down in its hole. We only ever see the front of the spider. So even making a full identification of what we're dealing with is going to be tricky because we only ever see one part of the spider. I showed lots of people I know bits of video I had on my phone of what was down the holes here. The first reaction, and it was immediate, they said, oh, that's a funnel web. So you're seeing all the B-roll video in a sense of what was down the spider holes, and it's important to see this because I would struggle to get this video again because this reserve area has radically changed, and that's the final part of this video. Okay, I've got a bit of a curious update about my favourite little area in the suburb which has a stack of spider holes. And before I go any further, oops, look who's in the way. A beautiful golden orb spider. I'm very sorry, little sweetheart. I'm going to have to move you because I'd like to. Just come through here. You can uh, rebuild your web tonight. I haven't totally destroyed her web there. She's still hanging in there. Maybe you can see she's a bit out of focus, but I can sneak past her without disturbing it too much okay yeah she's still there and i can show you something that has radically changed down here ah yes i just love how nature resets itself i'm going nice and wide here so you can see the lay of the land 
when I started shooting this video and I saw that dead chick on the ground, that was the 15th of November in 2023. I'm shooting this footage here today on the 15th of March, 2024. And it's when we take a closer look at the ground in particular around this area that you can see here, we're gonna start to see something has been messing with the spider holes. What's very curious now is when I look to where I knew where the spider holes were, well, that's what I see now. To me, this looks like fairly fresh diggings. I have got a ruler here today. There's a 12 inch ruler to give you some sense of scale. There's the Imperial side there. So yeah, who's been digging around here? That's what I just looked at there. Once your eyes start to connect into this, all you see now is holes. There's another one here. To me, the ones up this section look fairly fresh. There's more diggings here. Another hole here that the rain has semi-filled in. It may have been fairly deep at one stage, but what I can't see here is what rabbits leave behind, those little balls of poop which look like chewed up grass. I can't see any of that here. That's the area I've just walked in on, and you can see the holes there, there, uh, near that tree there as well. And as I go into what I call the more intensive spider infested area, I would say yes, I can still see holes every now and then. I'll point a hole out to you. So the spider holes are still here, but I can also see lots of other historical diggings that have been going on. Now I've walked into the reserve a bit more and I used to walk up this section here. I'm walking slowly uphill and this is where I used to see so many spider holes. But all I see now is what I call the evidence of something has come along here and basically cleaned the spiders out. Now there's also a very curious thing here. I can see some scat here. And when I look at this here, um, I'm sort of thinking it's rabbit, but I think this is not the critter that's taken out the spiders. So this is what I've just seen on the ground here. To me, it's all just like grassy, fibrous material. I'm sure an animal expert who knows their poop is going to explain what that is. I'm saying it's rabbit. That's what it feels like and looks like to me. This is a very, very different landscape to what I was seeing before summertime. And it's also very interesting that not all the spiders have been cleaned out. I still see the occasional spider hole there Okay, they're pretty obvious, I hope. I might have to put a red circle if you don't notice it. But if I go back a bit like this, you'll see quite close to that spider hole is quite substantial diggings, where I know there used to be spider holes before. Now, I'm just looking around for the perfect example for what this critter can do, and it's got a very, very focused way that it digs into the ground. And I think I found a great example. There's no rabbit poop here. That's very important to point out. This is not rabbits. I've got my ruler here. You'll see the size of this hole. You'll see how focused it is. Put the ruler in there. I'll just get a depth gauge of what's going on there. So it's digging into the ground about 10 centimeters and what's at about four inches in. Okay, so do you know the critter that has transformed this reserve here and I'd say eradicated much of the spider infestation that's here? Guess who it is? Well, I'm saying it's a bandicoot, and I've got lots of videos of bandicoots. I think they're marvelous little critters, although my wife would disagree with me on that because of the damage they've done in the garden. They're a strange critter. They're like the size of a rabbit. They've got a strange front nozzle on them. That's quite long. They've got excellent digging front claws and they're just perfect at digging up stuff out of the ground and eating it. They'll eat just about everything. And they're a strange critter because when I've watched them in the backyard through the security cameras, that I only ever see one of them. You never see a pair of them. I have seen a pregnant female. So from that, I've worked out their patch is rear facing. I dare say that stops the patch from filling up with dirt because they're obviously very good diggers. And I'm pretty sure that when I first found the spider infestation here, my first thought was, wow, once those bandicoots come through here, they are gonna clean up big time. And I believe that's what's happened because when I look down on the ground here, put it this way, I'm actually struggling to find those funnel web holes. Uh, but boy, oh boy, I am finding lots and lots of disrupted soil. And it's really classic of what bandicoots get up to. Am I surprised? Well, no. But maybe you're surprised to see how much it's changed. It's just remarkable, the feeding frenzy that's gone on here. I've got a prime example here of what bandicoots get up to. I've got my tall bench ruler there, so you can take a look at the scale of things. Look at the diggings there, and then we're going to take a look at this hole here. This is 
a very, very deep and interesting hole. I like this. It's all fresh digging. It hasn't been filled in by rain. And when I get my ruler here, and we're going to get a depth on this one. Boy, oh boy, yeah, we're cranking here. Okay. So we've got about 13 centimetres. And if we go to the inches side, that's about, well, pulling up to about five inches. That's a beauty. The next piece of video is one we're going to listen to. It's bandicoots in my backyard doing this sort of work. Listen carefully. This area here, it's got a lot of historical dug up soil in a sense and covered over by uh, leaf litter and things. And I remember this zone as I walked back towards the path, it was so many spider holes here, it wasn't funny. It was freaking scary actually. And now when I look at this area, all I see is disrupted areas. I mean, maybe you're having trouble seeing it. I'll point a few out. It's just this sort of mucking around that's going on here. Uh, the occasional spider hole has been left behind and maybe if I had a little camera here set up on one of the trees, you know, let's say this tree here, you know, looking out across this area here at night, I think it would reveal lots of the secrets that go on here and exactly who eats who. But in nature, you know, the old saying, there's always someone out to get you. And I think this is a classic example. Maybe it's worthwhile to take a look at the video that I shot in spring of 2023 in the same location and then you'll see the lay of the land versus what I'm showing you post summertime. While we're looking back in time, take note of the number of spider holes and the lack of disturbed earth. And all the time we're looking back in time, I'll put a title up saying spring 2023 so we don't get confused. The more I look here, the more holes that I see. And what's sort of curious is that they're facing this way. There's one there. There's one there because I'm actually walking uphill here. As I keep walking up here, there's more holes. You're getting your spider eyes in because that's what you need here. There's just so many to look at. They're much easier when they're facing you. Okay, and there's one here. They are absolutely everywhere. It's like the, the walk of death through here. Just crawling up through here. Oh my God, if I just go up here and your eyes will get tuned into what's going on here. Down there, oh, I can't believe it. It's just amazing. Your eyes are keyed into all this now. Look at them there. Okay, nice monster one there. And there's a nice grouping over here. I mean, look at that there. My God, I'd hate to be laying down here at night. It's just astonishing how different it is here now. And I remember back in spring when I found what I thought was a totally unnatural amount of spider holes in this zone here. And now what I find is, well, the bulk of the spider holes dug up and I'm saying it's bandicoots. I would struggle now to maybe find 10 or 15 of those funnel web holes that I was finding here. I've got to look really carefully and long and hard for them. I can find lots of dug up holes. And it was, I thought, just a great bookend to the story of the, the spiders in the reserve. And I'll finish the video off by showing you something that I mean I was just amazed by and I love coming down here to look at it and I'm just hoping there's not enough spider in the way and it's the brush turkey mound and well things here have changed as well I've got to be a little bit careful because it's spider city at the moment there's another one of those golden orb spiders up here okay uh there's a male and female there if I was really going to get into it I'd be studying that you never know what you're going to see, but I will come around this way so I don't disrupt another spider. Oh, I can see something else here, which is the story of our summer. I'll just grab this here. Very, very curious. 
we had a, a quiet cicada season. We did have some of the bush cicadas rusting away in the bush, uh, but to find a cicada shell is a little bit like finding a hen's tooth this time round or this summer. And uh, that's why I'm making a point of it. You know, sometimes you have lots of cicadas and then sometimes during summer you have very few. The brush turkey mound looks to me like it's inactive now. I haven't seen Ken, the brush turkey here for some weeks and I can't see any fresh diggings going on on top of the mound here, but it was to me mesmerizing watching how studious Ken was at looking after the brush turkey eggs and nurturing the eggs until they hatched and then the young would spring from the mound, which I never caught. I was hoping to capture that moment. And then, and sadly, a lot of the young uh, die out. Not many of the brush turkey chicks go on to be adults, but it was weird uh, watching Ken here on the mound was what made me start to find that spider infestation and one thing led to another and hopefully all the story's been told now mind you there is a spider behind me about to mate should i look at that or shouldn't i